yeah, so it's our pleasure. Natalie Myers is also here. So we are facilitating today Presqueity services to improve reuse and fairness of research data and software. And we have several different resources for the project. And the idea is with the session that is also hands on. But what is Presqueity? So it's an implementation grant and previous planning grant for really collaboratively design, develop, um, and connect interoperable repository agnostic data and software and yeah increase the quality of preservation and use these tools so you can find the implementation grant and the planning grant at the urls here and what you can see so so we are in the third year of the implementation and we are connecting to all these different systems so it connects and enhances and and the idea behind presq2 is not to be a, a new user interface, a new environment um, researchers have to work with. But the philosophy is we connect to existing solutions they want to use. So if you hopefully see something you are already working with, like GitLab or GitHub, um, Figshare. So Figshare you should have used already for this workshop. Curate ND is a preservation system um, at Notre Dame, Synodo. You, I've heard probably about it, uh, the preservation developed at CERN. And Hotel Hub Zero and OSF are science gateways. So we are connecting to them and also can transfer data between them. And we have services. So SciGraph is to enhance keywords. Uh, we will talk more in detail about fair shake and fair sharing. And Easy is another service. I don't go at the moment into detail, but I would like to go, what is the real concept? So we don't want to have a standalone solution in PressQT, but really use RESTful web services to connect and that it's easily integratable and it's a user-centered open design and collaborative development. So therefore really testing it. So we didn't start from the beginning a user interface for let's say all the users more for demo purposes to show what kind of services we can deliver for the different platforms. So if you want to follow um, the demo, you can do it yourself. So we, you need an authentication token for that. And create it in the partner system. So I've showed if you, if you have the user ID in GitHub, Synodo maybe, or GitLab, you can follow the exercises. So the activities are really bound to existing user ideas because the idea was not to say, oh, you have to have an additional user idea to work with PressQT. We are using the user IDs already integrated in partner systems. And it has the authorization rules, of course, in the partner system, what kind of authorization you have with your user ID. So the partner systems just follow then the established processes when we connect to them in RESTful services. So if you would like to create your own token, you can go to this um, URL. That is the demo user interface we are using to show and, and to see the connection. So you see already the little icons here. And I give you a little bit of time maybe to go there. Thank you, Natalie, for posting it there. So and we have a read the docs. We will talk a little bit more about that. And the API token, to make it easy maybe for the beginning, even if you use PressQT, let's say for Synodo, you can just really create for the API token. You can click on everything. Like, oh yeah, I, I want to have all accessories with this API token. It's your own one. It, the PressQT is not doing anything that messes up your data or creates data without that you decide that it will be published. It will be always in draft mode, so you can delete it, even if you test today something. So you don't have to be concerned there that we, you, know, you use it now for testing and then you have, you know, blown up your Synodo or GitHub account. Sorry, um, uh, Sandra, which URL am I pressing in order to get the token? Because I, I pressed the, the UI one. Is that the right one? So if you go to this 
Oh, yeah, yeah, that's where I went, and I'm I don't have any place to pray. Oh, if you go on the available connection, sorry, I should have explained that better. Available connection, you should see. Oh, okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, 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 and okay, you, you see yeah, 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 okay, good, thank you. Yeah, sorry, that it was not clear. And then this access token um, screen comes up that you can click on API token. Right. And it yeah. leads, leads you to, for example, if you selected GitHub, you can create your own. Yeah, yeah. Token. So, yeah. We thought that it might be more fun when we do the demo that everyone also can test it. I know that it's also dangerous sometimes. <laughs> we will see. I, I really hope uh, that the system doesn't crash now. I, I mean, you know, we, we tested it already at the same time with 20, 25 users. So I'm, I'm very positive that, that we survive it. So coming back really to, to this pick a system. So what, what is, for example, you know, um, the environment you are normally working with if, if you do your research. It might be a virtual research environment or science gateway like Hub Zero Hotel, maybe the open science framework. And then you want to preserve the data because that is often what funding bodies are asking us for. And, and also you want the data available also in 10 years you have done in, in the research. So uh, that is really the idea here to, to connect the different systems. And um, it would be, yeah, if you have suggestions for us, for example, on the preservation system side, what is missing here, we are happy to add also repositories, domain repositories or connect to them. Every system that had, has a RESTful API, we are prepared to, to connect to if, if it has this technology. So talking a little bit about um, the project. So it started with a planning grant, uh, I said shortly at the beginning and the, yeah, in the implementation period. Um, at the yeah, end of the first round, we hope to continue with more, more of course, uh, activities on the project. And we really looked from a usability point of view and from different stakeholders' points of view at this project, because we wanted that a lot of people use it. So that, that is the goal and come together and we want to, to really reduce pain points, you know, switching between systems from, you know, you are working in one system and you want to preserve the data somewhere. Then, so uh, you have to, you know, preserve your source code. So we thought if it's possible to do it in a way that you don't have to switch between three, four, five environments, that is the goal of PressQT and to add really beneficial data for the whole process. And so we looked at questions like, is it easy to use, easy to learn? What is time consuming about the process? And so we came up with this, this, this technology. So and that is uh, coming back to this not standalone solution because there are so fantastic solutions already out there. And, they're, you know, reaching a really good maturity level like Zenodo. And GitHub is widely used. We, we don't try to, you know, change the use of GitHub. What we want to do is to add additionally metadata or to, so what is often the problem? You, you need the keywords to find something. I mean, probably each of us has tried to find something in the preservation system yet, huh? like, you put in a keyword and it can be very overwhelming or it doesn't show up the things you're really looking for. And that is what, where we come in and we hope that we can add additional value. This keyword enhancement and yeah, adding more metadata and doing fair testing. So the, the core team is at uh, ND and High Hesburgh Libraries and the Center for Research Computing. And Natalie is um, a facilitator also today and John and Rick are co-PIs. 
So the Center for Research Computing, these people uh, supported the development and um, also the current A, as well as the colleagues from the Hesburgh libraries. And that we can really meet the demand of a diverse community. Um, we involved a lot of collaborators and testing partners. So you see maybe a couple of um, projects you also know, um, like Reprocip, Jupiter, CERN as a collaborator. We had workshops with data futures or the supercomputing data center. Um, Mark Wilkinson with the Fair Evaluation Service and Daniel Clark and Avi Mayen with FairShake. So to really look what what do users need? And then we, we look from librarians to software engineers to researchers and tried to, to get all the pain points. So you can find different PressQT resources. So the first one is really the um, website um, where you can find announcement of workshop. Um, yeah, at the moment, since we are at the end of the project, we will probably publish our uh, report there and hopefully soon the, the next stage. Presentations and project plans are, can be found in OSF. We have documentation with demo videos and read the docs and the user interface we are playing today with. And these are the different set of services. And because the main topic for today is fairness of research objects, I give it to Natalie now. Thank you, Sandra. Um, what I'd like to do now is um, give everyone a moment to get a token so you can try the service. If you haven't gotten a token yet, um, take a handful of minutes and go get a token for GitHub. Um, I'm going to share my screen real quickly. We're looking at the notes that all of us can access. The link to the notes is um, in your slides in the chat. Apologies. Um, please open the notes. And in the notes, what you'll see are um, information about resources needed to take part. The link to um, the PresQT graphical user interface to access the services. And you'll also see um, advice about getting the tokens you need to test the service. Um, you'll want to have those tokens ready to uh, copy paste into the GUI so you can test the PresQT services in the GUI and its um, way that it allows you to access fair tests and run them against endpoints of interest to you. If you need a little help on instructions on getting um, tokens for each target, um, you can get them here. And I'll paste that link in the chat also. Um, I'll give you a couple minutes to do that. And once you've got a token or you're ready to move forward, um, put up your green yes button. I'll give you a few minutes. You can, of course, also put up just your green uh, button and, and say, I just want to, you know, observe today. So that is also okay. <laughs> So sorry, I'm being a bit thick here. Um, it's a it's a long uh, week, so I have to get a token for every single system that I want to be able sure. to use. Right? I think that was the piece that I was missing because I haven't read all your documentation. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, and so a little I, context. So I logged in, but I got in through GitHub Bind, and then um, I, I, I. So what you mean is I have to then go into OSF, and then I have to go into the other places, right? And get a yeah, you need. 
pairwise tokens. Yeah, so okay. one I, I, token for each service you want to receive at or send to. Um, and the reason for this is because PressQT is a stateless service and because the tokens and the authentication right now are endpoint specific within that stateless service. So um, take a minute to get a token for each service you want to use as we move forward to discuss some of the features of uh, PresQT and how those relate to fair testing in particular. So to test the services, you you need only one, but if you want to transfer between systems, and that is where PressUT is really strong, because you don't have to download first something, upload in the next system, and you know have to work on give it, getting it into the right formats. Um, that does PressUT automatically if you have the token for two. So if you have the token for one system. You can try the services. So we can try the services if you have one token. And now to talk a little bit more about FAIR. Um, we've learned a lot about FAIR during um, the past uh, day and a quarter here at CW21. And now we'll dig a little deeper into how one might assess the fairness of digital objects at a particular endpoint. Our services in PresQT rely on the FAIR evaluation services and its machine actionable indicator tests. You can view each of those FAIR maturity indicators, the test, which FAIR principle it tests, and how that test attaches itself to each fair principle. Here in the MI test portion of the fair evaluator service, I'm going to paste a link to that in the chat for you and give you a moment to browse those tests. That'll give you a feel for what you're interacting with behind the scenes in the PresQT services. And here we'd like to thank Mark Wilkinson, who delivered a workshop to the PresQT project, its partners and developers, so we could think about integrating the PresQT service with each of these maturity indicator tests. You'll notice as you run down the principal column, you have the principles F for findable, A for accessible, I for interoperable, R for reusable, and the tests for each of those documented here on the fair sharing um, GitHub site. Just give you a moment to browse those. That'll give you a feel for what we're up to. One particular thing you can do with the FAIR evaluation services is to create a collection of tests. That's what the PresQT team has done. We've developed our own collection of tests that we think makes sense for the PresQT endpoints. You can see a list of those tests here in the link I've pasted to the chat and on the screen that I'm sharing. These are the tests that are part of the PresQT FAIR integration. And you can see the tests that run behind the scenes 
when you use the PresQT GUI. All of the services available in the PresQT GUI are also available to you at the command line and for you to integrate in your own applications against the PresQT services. Think of the GUI as a convenient mechanism for becoming aware of the services against the PresQT endpoints and how people might use them. And then imagine how to access those same endpoints and services using your own software and tools or tailored to your own curation needs. Now we're going to take a look at the Fair Shake Assessment Service. We had a second workshop with Daniel Clark and Avi Mayan on Fair Shake and their implementation of a manual assessment functionality that allows users to access the fairness of their research projects. I'm going to paste a link to that for you as well. Can I, can I just ask a question, please? Sure, go for it. Uh, so in, in Press QT, when you select the repository, you get a, a window that says download, upload, transfer out, and then a list of resources. Is that sending the information repository to one of these um, tools then? Yes. Um, yes, and feel free to share your screen if you'd like, and we can um, take an example from um, the context of your question. Yeah, so when I get to this, I don't, I don't know what these are doing. Is this is down, downloading something about the repo to me or am I putting something into my repo and am I transferring out into one of these tools? Great question. So depending which of those buttons in the GUI you use to access a PresQT service, you'll get a different um, action out of PresQT. If you click the download button, you're using the PresQT file transfer service take a bag container of your object and put it on your local machine. Okay. And it will come along with any of the keywords you've already enhanced or things from the other services to the right that we can take another look at once you explore this. But when you do this, PressQT, um, interacts with the endpoint on your behalf using your token and creates a bagot package of the contents of that level of the endpoint you were at, including its metadata and a PresQT um, generated fixity check that you oh. later can use as you up version or as you back check for your own certainty in whether your file is um, corrupt or changed since your last use, or since it's creator's deposit. Mm -hmm. So you'll see some elements in that bag um, that are PresQT created, as well as your original data. You'll see the PresQT file transfer service metadata.json file. Yeah, I don't want to double and, check because it will open Visual Studio. Right, <laughs> exactly. Right. So um, those are, if you would um, now return to the GUI, um, what you'll see um, if you escape from that pane and you hover over each of the other buttons are the opportunity for you to upload a file from your desktop through the PresQT service oh, okay. to the endpoints of your choice. You'll also see the option to transfer out. Sandra is going to talk a little bit more about that during the demo. Cool. And on the right, you'll see the fair tests we're talking about now. Yep. And we'll see a little bit more about those in the demo too. Okay. Each of them refer to services PresQT can execute against on your behalf so that you can either create an emulation proposal using the easy service so you can enhance keywords using SciGraph or so you can run 
the fair share or for fair shake tests that we're looking at now. Oh, okay, cool. Great. Yeah, it's really fun. And um, it gives you a way through the GUI to get a feel for what each of those services do for you before um, trying to um, do anything fancy or complicated on the command line. <laughs> yeah, too right. Okay, okay you now, um, <laughs> sure. Um, we'll, um, and maybe we we'll let Alex share his screen because he has already the results. We have only three minutes left, so perfect. So, yeah, so Alex, yeah, it tells me you cannot start screen share while other people are sharing. So, could you please unshare yours? Yeah, now <laughs> I can share my, but. Which one, which one, aha, this one. So I guess you're now able to see Firefox with the output, right? So, okay, wonderful. So you can see. The user interface of PressQT, but the PressQT under the fair relation service. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, so you can show for a moment how it works with the UI. Go for it, Sandra. Mm -hmm. Can you stop sharing? Okay. Uh, shall I stop sharing? Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me. But that's great that you could run it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was quite quick. It told me you need to wait for 15 minutes, but it was actually two or three. It's a small software package. And oh. I can yeah. I can see now. I will try to make sense of what is read. So I prepared and already is green. Mm -hmm. token here. So I clicked on GitHub now, insert my API token. And I use this PressQT source code we have. And then I go on services, select fair share and start it. And you see all the metrics that uh, Natalie talked about. So this is really all the selected ones, um, the fair evaluation service um, offers. And then you can press evaluate. So this may take several minutes, but as you have seen today, the service was fast. So it's, we are yeah, a little bit dependent also on, of course, uh, the efficiency and performance of the services we are connecting to. And uh, what you can, will see in, in a moment is that, that all these tests that are offered by the Fair Evaluation Service are performed here. And so, Carol, you said something mm -hmm. you wouldn't do this. Um, no, no, uh, oh, no it's, it's, I hadn't. So uh, although you had the, uh, the interface was really, um, you said really simple, uh, apparently I'm a lot simpler because <laughs> I couldn't operate your interface. But, uh, but I've been prompted now by, by Alex H. And uh, so I'm all good. Uh, so. Uh, good, so yeah, and here you can see the results. So some, yeah, it's found. So these are really the evaluation results from, from you know, the evaluation service. So we, we haven't changed anything what, what they prepared, we are reusing it. And these are suggestions how to make it data more fair. So some are, you know, in green and say, yeah, this already worked out. And some are in, in red that it didn't work out, but maybe there's a reason that, that it shouldn't work out. So it's not always that these suggestions have to be fulfilled. These are suggestions to make data more fair. So that's the idea. I know we are already over to the time. <laughs> so I'm not sure that I, I get the chance to do the fair shake shortly because that is the, the manual test. And I say, oh, this is a tool. I want to run it against the tool and I would know that there's a unique name. It's, no, this information is maybe not available. Yeah, this is available in this and submit assessment then it creates this nice little image to represent how fair you are. And the more blue, the better, so the more fair. And with that, I hope you still can take some questions. Thank you for attending. And 
I have two questions very quick. One is what is the sustainability plan for the platform? Because you said the project is just finished. So we have a sustainability plan for the next 18 months. So we maintain it. You can reach us. We have maintenance money for the next 18 months and hope in the 18 months to have a new project accepted by a funding. So 18 and, the second, and the second question, how extensible is it? So for example, in when we use our own crate, which is a much more elaborate way of being able to package metadata, we use Bagit as the, uh, the packaging kind of generic platform. So is it possible for us to then extend uh, some of the functionalities of your endpoints so that we can unpack the Bagit and do testing and things like this? How, how extensible is that? Or should I talk to you about that offline? Oh, no, no, I, I think we can directly react on that. So the so Bagit, we can unpack it even for you when you say you want to have it unpacked when it arrives at your um, partner system or the system you, you like to have and you can add your metadata in the process so we are open we, we did extra steps for example for hotel and added extra metadata extra metadata fields so we yeah we work with partners there to extend that I think I crashed at a key point in my question. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, isn't it always the way? I think it's to do with having 72 open tabs. Um, is the, um, so is this, I would like to use, to extend it to use RO Crate, right? So RO Crate is this mechanism of being able to, uh, uh, conventions for being able to organize metadata, but we use Bagit as our carrier, right, uh, for it. <laughs> Uh, press your T2. We have also Bagot. That means. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. That's our kind of common denominator, but we have more elaborate metadata. So we could do, do more extensibility points at the endpoints for your fair checking, for example. So, it, and, and I'm looking for a carrier framework for our crate for a, a couple of big European projects. Yeah, uh, yeah, money, Natalie, money. So, <laughs> um, so this is why I would like to to talk to talk to you about this offline if that's okay yeah we'd love to explore it because i think that the ro crate um container and its metadata should package well inside um the baguette and move back and forth using the standard press qt services but yeah. i'd love to test what happen what we can do with the ro crate metadata on the other end right and how we could use that to leverage or expand the PresQT service, especially in um, the ability to launch an emulation and especially in the ability to do the fair testing. That would be incredible. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's exactly, we're on the same page then. Very good. Okay, so that, that's great. Uh, I've been pinging uh, Mark Wilkinson on the side about this. I'm afraid this. The, the main room is starting again.